We're all looking at the same thing. Thank you for joining us for another perspective from the Sag Nasty If Anybody Asked Me podcast. Don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment. For more videos, please subscribe to the channel. Again, it, it was Purdue. I looked at, and we looked at this like, okay, um, who who is if if I'm playing receiver, who's in front of me right now? If they have a freshman All American or two freshman All Americans, the chances of me coming in and taking them away is going to be tough, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I wanted to play right away. Mm -hmm. So you start to look at what are my best opportunities. Well, let's take a look at these rosters. Okay, let's see who they have, and I'm start comparing myself to these other positions, speed wise, stats wise. I'm going, shit, I think not only do I like Purdue, but that there's an opportunity for me to come in and have a chance here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then one of the things was, is nine available? And <laughs> actually all the schools, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Wisconsin, and Purdue, nine was available. It Number was, nine. That would have that would have probably been a deciding factor, which sounds stupid, but no, that's uh, important for you. It's like power in but there. it was just for us, it was. And I tell people this during the recruiting processes, don't be so quick to eliminate schools. You know, some of these kids, I think they commit too early because mm. as, you, as you go, schools will eliminate themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? They'll, yeah. they'll do things where you're like, because it's almost like a relationship. You could only bullshit so long until your true colors comes out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're, they're going to do something that you're going to go, Oh, I don't, I don't, uh, 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 I don't like that. I don't, I'm that now nah, we're, we're getting them off. Cause there's so many great things about these schools. You, you have to look for, well, unfortunately it, it, what, what the separating factor may not be much, but you, some things happen. You're just like, Oh, that's it, man. I'm they're, they're out. They're out. Even at that time though, like prestige wise, Purdue was the lowest on the list out of those schools, right. Versus a Michigan or Notre Dame at that time. In in. I guess if, if if you were to think about football, even this money, winning, yeah, winning and money, facilities. <laughs> but I didn't give a shit about any of that stuff. I know, goal, yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to. Well, they were on the rise, though. They were definitely like, on the rise because they're they on the rise. rise. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know what? Here, I thought this too. I said, here's an opportunity. You know, if I went to Michigan or Michigan State, Wisconsin, I could go there and be, be a guy. Mm -hmm. I thought I could go to Purdue and be the guy. Really? And, Again, and, there's and, that thing. And have an opportunity to rewrite history at that university. You had you confidence I mean? that I just didn't know about. And to hear you articulate it, it's, it almost seems foreign to me because I just didn't see it like that in you. And well, you articulate so well, too. Well, you have, well, again, I mean, I'm a, the last year and a half, Daryl, I've really put myself in a different mind state and doing these talks and, and, and thinking about things and ha knowing how to have a conversation and, and how to appreciate what you have going on and, and understanding my mental stuff and, and knowing where I'm coming from and, and being able to talk about this stuff, like it's, it takes time, right? I mean, it just, it's just like anything. The more I do it, the more I talk, the more I articulate, the more I get different information. I find when I talk more, you, you almost having conversations, all of a sudden you'll say something that you're like, wow, I, I don't know where that came from, but I never thought about that. But because we're talking about it, it brings up something you may not think about, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So again, but back then I didn't, I had goals, but I didn't express them too much, right? Because nope. one, you got to be careful about doing that. Because if you, here's the deal: when you when you're vocal about your goals, people hold you accountable. That if you don't reach those, they're going to be all over you. Oh, you yeah. said you were going to da da da. You know, and they're saying? waiting like, for I you never, to fail. They're waiting. I never. Yeah, I was always like in my mind, I'm like, this is what I want to do, and I'm going to do everything to achieve that. But I'm not going to step up and own it because then it's like, wow, shit. Okay. Um, it adds that little bit of pressure. I probably you know, didn't have the maturity, but I wish that I knew more that I could even support you better. I don't have like the articulation I have now back then, but I wish I could have like 
just you know like i tried my best but i wish i could have uh, like you oh, really I, had like I, a I, dream I, I, and i wanted I, to like our relationship i really i thought our relationship was the exactly how it should have been yeah but still i want to cheer for you even more like to hear it now like how it is is like this is so cool like you achieved oh, achieved we, a dream we cheered we cheered but you it was did but you achieved a dream it, it's not a dream it wasn't like a lifelong dream it was once i reached a certain point then i was like oh okay well shit. yeah you kept climbing and suddenly like there was this like dream point is kind of what i'm saying but because you said like, like be the best player in the team best player in the conference and keep on rising and suddenly up. like remember i didn't we didn't i didn't watch football or talk about going to the nfl or yeah playing. i didn't mean like that i didn't mean like a kid dream or something like that no i didn't mean like that no, I, mean but like, I mean yeah. yeah and as i as i got closer it was like oh wow this this could be a possibility here mm -hmm. but there's a ton more shitty people out there than there are good people as mm -hmm. far as i don't want to say personally wise but maybe professionally i mean there's not a lot of good coaches there's not a lot of good that's what i'm saying did you ever meet a joe tiller again no no that's what i was wondering like at that level because that seems like such a rare human being in your he life he was he was almost an anomaly mm -hmm. um he he again if you look at his program um well here hold on one second this book actually came out it's the 100 things purdue fans should know and do before they die mm -hmm. and so for instance Chapter and the chapters are just like a couple pages, but what is a boilermaker? John Wooden, Drew Brees, Gene Cady, Joe Tiller, Rick Mount, Glenn Robinson. But if you go to let me see, I think it might show how many people during Joe Tiller's time made it to the the NFL. It's just it's 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 crazy. Um, let me see. So Tiller served as a boilermaker's head coach from '97 to 2008, the winningest coach in school history. 87 and 62 record, including 53 and 43 in the Big Ten. He was 10 and 2 in Old Oak and Buckets. That's against, you know, Indiana. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, prior here, get this, prior to hiring Joe in November of 1996, Purdue football had played in a total in the school history of five bowl games. Mm. In the preceding 15 years, the Boilermakers managed merely a 54. 107 and five record. Mm -hmm. Tiller do so you talk about that uh five bowl games in the history. He went to 10 bowl games, including a 2001 Rose Bowl. Okay, mm -hmm. here you go. An average of more than seven wins per season and a Big Ten championship in 2000. Tiller coached 53 Purdue players who went on to the National Football League, six All Americans, and two academic All Americans. Tiller was recognized as the 97 Big Ten and National Coach of the Year. So Again, you look at before and, you know, we had some great players like, you know, uh, Bob Greasy and Len Dawson and, and uh, Jim Everett. And, they actually weren't winning. Uh, uh, Rod Woodson. And, and uh, uh, so there are some great players that came through Purdue, but nothing, I mean, before and after was like a glaring difference. He just knew how to bring in what I always say is he, he knew how to find not only the great athletes to compete at that level, but ones that could have success at Purdue as far as the university mm -hmm. and in the community. Mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to go, and he knew how to find those, those guys that could come in and be difference makers. And here's the deal. He has a lot of similarities to um, the coach of New England. Um, uh, I forgot his name, too. <laughs> and that's why I think, I mean, shit, there's been over probably 12 or 13 Purdue players from Taylor's era that went on to win Super Bowls with Bill Belichick in New England. Bill Belichick, yeah, there you go. I was going to look it up, yeah. <laughs> similar, similar mentalities. Um, mm -hmm. And Tiller was, I mean, he was a, he was a mean son of a bitch when it came down to winning. And if you mess with his program and then his wife, Arnett Tiller would come in and bake cookies. And like, we'd go over during the summer and he, right over where we used to live, where I live now. I mean, I could walk to hit where his house was. He'd have pool parties where he's barbecuing. He's got his dogs and he's sitting there, you know, with a, you know, a hat on drinking a beer and, you know, Hey, you know, just, just 
Joe, just average Joe, you know what I'm saying? And um, I remember after, after we would win, you know, we'd sing the fight song and then he'd say, it's Miller time. And that was always his, his big thing. You know what I mean? So just a, just a great guy. And um, I do actually, this, this, this book is kind of cool. I do have a, actually I have a chapter in it. What is it? What is it? So it's a hundred things to do, know and do in Purdue. How is it? What does it say about you? A hundred things Purdue fans should know and do before they die. So no what athletes they, they should know, what traditions, yeah, what yeah, yeah. history you should know about Purdue. You know, Mike Allstott, Robbie Hummer, Robbie Hummer, Robbie Hummel, um, you know, ending of games, the big dogs, big, Rod Woodson, uh, Bob Greasy, what a spoiler maker is, Carson Edwards, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, what's your chapter? So my chapter, you want me to read it? I want to see, what's the title, yeah. It's just Stuart Swagger. It's like, one thing you should know is Stuart Swagger. That's awesome. Yeah, well, yeah no, 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 it, 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 so here's what it says. Yeah. What you should know. So it says, the ultimate resource guide for true Purdue fans. Yeah. Is what it says. So here you go. How about we do this? I'll read this. We'll end on this, okay? Okay. Oh, shit. God damn it. I got to uh -oh. pick up my... Yep. Too late. I didn't realize it was this late. I got to pick the girls up from basketball. Okay, Shoot. you're going. I'll talk to you later. Okay? All right, dude. Thanks, yeah. girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye love bye. you. Yeah, love you too.